A few days ago, I did a video on one tip for every attacking operator. If you haven't watched that, it should be like our last few videos. Um, link should be in the description uh, if you want to go ahead and watch that. So in this video, I want to do one tip for every defending operator. Before the video starts, make sure that you drop a like, sub, and comment. It's much appreciated as we are growing and heading towards that 200k uh, sub mark. We're a long way away, but, you know, it is the nearest goal in sight. Besides that, the question of the day is, what is one thing that you like about Disrupt, our YouTube channel, and what's one thing that you would like to see from us do better? Don't be shy to give criticism down in the comments because that's how we know how to become better and grow. Besides that, let's get right into the video. Use smoke smoke canister to actually deny plant. It actually clips through walls. Tyson BR does an amazing job breaking down a bunch of different uh, spots. If you want to go watch this video, I'll drop his link down in the comments below. Mute, mute jammers can actually be placed in very high positions and it can be very helpful. For example, I'm going to jump up on this cabinet and I'm going to throw a mute jammer on top of the cabinet. And what this is going to mute off is lobby double door. As you can see from the following clip, that's what it does. There's tons of these uh, angles, so basically you just have to get creative with it. Thank you. Is it gonna... Come on, kill feed. Load up. You have to throw another drone. There you go. Thank you. 11 hit a castle, so you can pre-place an easy run out and it'll catch people off guard. On consulate, you can pre-place a C4 underneath printer, and it's an easy C4 for those silly gooses that want to repel in. You can also do this on long desk. While using Doc in sticky predicaments, you can actually stem your teammates. It's kind of like how you uh, capital or ass charge bullet holes. Same thing. Instead of placing your armor down for your teammates, place it down for an easy C4 bait with, say, a Valkyrie or a Pulse or any operator with a C4. Capcans actually make a slight noise, as you can tell by this video. Just listen closely. When pairing Jaeger with an operator with a shield, make sure to put a nice space in between the wall and the shield so you can actually put an ADS in between. This allows it to not get destroyed very easily and people would actually have to burn the ADS to destroy the shield. A good tip for bandit tricking is watch for the Thatcher's blue lighting. Just wait for that to show up on screen and then you can start putting down your bandit down. When using frost, just TK your teammate and throw down a frost mat on his body and the frost mat will be hidden. I'm kidding. I truly don't know any other pro like good tips besides maybe, you know, randomly placing your frost mats. It's kind of the same thing with cap can. While using Velk on consulate, if you set up a pre-play C4 in long hallway down in lobby, it's an easy kill. When using Echo, either keep drones in pocket and try to play your life as long as possible because we know how valuable Echo is for uh, plant denial. But a lot of times people like to throw their Echo cams and IQ is a huge, huge, you know, counter to Echo. So, for example, I want to show you the spot. Uh, it's concrete and, you know, IQ can't actually reach it unless, you know, she goes outside the breach if the breach is open. A lot of times you can find parts in the ma different maps and this is just one of them on console. When using mirror, you should definitely use bullet holes and punch holes just for easy ways to quick peek because you're not allowing the enemy to know where you are. Because if you're just in one station area and you're randomly shooting through a soft wall with no punch holes or bullet holes, it's very easily to get uh, pre-fired and countered. When using Legion and Ella, you can actually put your gadgets in between floorboards and it can hide them very, very well. Especially Legion mines because it's very unexpected and you literally have to look into the floor. A lot of times you can catch people off guard doing this and with Ella mines, you don't really expect it if you hide it properly. There's a difference between if someone's on a cam or off a cam close to you and if that cam's close to you. For example, on screen, you're going to see that the Twitch is on the cam and it's very aggressive. Now you can see it's off and it's a lot less aggressive. 
sound will also make a will be very loud in your ears if the person's on the cam something i don't see a lot with maestro cams or creativity a lot of times people just put it in default spots for example i'm going to show you a third floor down maestro cam that you can extend and you can actually deny plant because white car or white vans a very common plant spot for example maestro is going to put it up in cabinets on consulate he's going to throw an impact up towards white van into a piano and he's going to get a line of sight on twitch on white van this gives you a deep line of sight and denial. Nobody's going to be wanting to look at the sky, basically, to try to get rid of a Maestro Cam. Now, of course, it is easily counterable if um, someone drones at the Maestro Cam, but this is just a very creative solution. With the new guard break, it's very hard to play operator like Clash if you're just trying to solo queue or do your own thing. You need to play together. I know this isn't really a tip, but this is something that's mandatory, especially with this new guard break, because you can barely flinch back. Once you get hit, you're basically screwed and you're exposed. Something I noticed from Alibi players is they use uh, her Prisma mines very wrong. Basically, they throw their little gadgets just in proper positions where people can just shoot the gadget very easily and get rid of it. I think uh, Alibi is best used, for example, as you can see in Garage, I'm placing them in situations where the enemy, if they open breach, they can't shoot it. And it gets in their way and basically they're going to end up having to shoot through it and that just gives us free pings and free intel. Lucy's banshees are best placed in very awkward positions where enemies can't knife them. For example, putting them, I'm going to put one on black car, and this surrounds basically any entry point from breach. Of course, they can walk in breach, but they can't actually get aggressive for pipes or behind white van, etc. You should be using your Malusis in thought of either denying a entry point that's very common, like for example, black car, and I also put one on white van. Something I've seen was Pro League when you play Cade and Goyo and you actually put a Cade underneath the Goyo shield on the main wall, you can get two of the walls and the IQ cannot destroy the Cade charge off of the shield. Now, something I noticed with Wamai, a lot of times players end up putting uh, Wamai disc together and it's actually wasting utility because, for example, if a grenade or something gets caught, it's going to explode that whole radius and destroy multiple Wamai gadgets. You should be spreading out your Wamais for best uh, utility usage. Now I'm gonna keep it a buck. When it comes to Warden, I, 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 this has ruffled so many feathers. Like I've been sitting here just confused. Like I, I don't even use Warden in ranked or even like CMUs at all. So if you guys got any tips down below besides, you know, the basics, like, you know, he can of course like evade being stunned, smoked, all that. Like what actual tips or like tricks can you do with his utility or just him in general? Now, when using Oryx, I feel like it's best to use him as a, a late flank type of thing. You shouldn't be roaming off the bat. I think it's best to pop all the hatches so it wastes a lot of enemies' time. Just so at the end of the round, you can actually try to make a flank in the last like 30 seconds. I feel like this would be a lot better option, especially now that Oryx got the T5 with the 1.5 time scope. So he can actually play sight and just be a, a lot better of an anchor and then be a better, you know, flank. I feel that Cavi is best paired with beepers because it allows her to get gain some type of intel on the roam. For example, when you're getting jackal tracked, there will be a great area where you can uh, go silent stuff again and you won't be tracked. You can do this a bunch of times and you can be evaded into getting tracked by jackal completely. It c should be an easy flank mixed with those beepers. Something I see way too early in the round when it comes to down to Mozzie is players will put down their pests at the start of the round. When you're using Mozzie pests in the prep phase, what I suggest you actually do is that you count drones and actually take out drones instead of getting three of them in a pest. Because a lot of the times what happens is players don't actually get the drones and the drones actually get uh, very like scared and weary and they run away from the you know for exact location where the drone pest is so when you're using mozzie what you should be doing in the prep phase is going and hunting drones this will lower their drone economy because you can take out multiple drones and then you can use your pests this allows the attacking team to have a lot less intel and you know every drone counts in this type of matter now, if you enjoyed the video, make sure that you like, sub, and comment. It's much appreciated as it, of course, helps the channel. If you enjoyed this type of video, let me know down in the comments. My goal for this type of video was to at least help you learn one thing with at least one operator. So if you knew everything, then, you know, maybe you're just a god and uh, maybe I just need to get my IQ up, especially with the Warden thing, because, you know, I, I'm still confused what I could have done for Warden. But let me know down in the comments, like, what some tips and tricks for Warden. 
because I, to be honest, do not play him, and I probably have less than an hour on him. But besides that, this was Garfield from DG. I appreciate you for watching. One love.